I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education, and we are speaking with Jonathan Jonas, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Galt Joint Union High School District, and he is an English teacher at Galt High School. Thanks for joining us. Of course, thank you for having me. Okay, so tell me what levels of English that you teach. So I teach specifically freshmen, and that could be our freshman uh, college preparatory class or freshman honors. And I also teach our AP Literature and Composition, which is going to be seniors. Okay, so, so what are high school English teachers uh, having their kids read these days? Or is it a mixture of contemporary and classics? What's your preferred? Uh, I, I'm on the middle ground. That's a, that's a hot topic in English classrooms is what to read. And so it's a nice mix, I think, at the moment. My seniors read both, obviously, like Shakespeare, anything from the uh, Victorian times, but then also are reading Beloved, Feral to Arms, um, you know, authors that are within the you know, last few hundred years because it's easy to just focus on the older things and, not, and forget about the new. So it's a mix. So when the students are reading uh, the classics, um, mm -hmm. Do they have uh, trouble interpreting uh, based on you know, the structure of it? I think at times it's, it takes training to be able to read the classics because a lot of the syntax is different, the sentence, uh, the way they structure their work. Obviously, there's antiquated words. And so teaching them those skills to navigate that often is a task in itself and can help them in other things they do as well, not just with reading. So then how do you, how do you, when, you when they are interpreting that, how do you get them to kind of do a correlation with modern day? How do you make the comparisons? A great question. Uh, we focus a lot on common themes and archetypes because even though these books were written 500 years ago, 400, 300, 20, not much has changed with humanity. We're all still falling in love. We're all still fearing death. We all have ambition. We all struggle with morality and what to do, what is right, what is wrong, how do we define that? And so showing them that these themes that we're getting, these messages we're getting out of it, is the same no matter where you're from or what time period you lived in. And once they connect to that and they can also bring up their own background into it and what do they take from it, I think that bridges that, that spatial and time gap. And is that eye-opening for them when they realize that something written several hundred years ago can still stand today? I think at times. I think one of the big things I, my students ask is why do we still read Shakespeare? And, and I tell them, you know, you don't have to read Romeo and Juliet to be successful in life but it's not gonna hurt you, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And so them realizing that teenagers were the same 500 years ago, for them, it really is. They, they do have that eye-opening moment, and I think they start to sense a little more about the world. So there's a lot of uh, the critical thinking mm -hmm. that has to go into this. Yes. What are some basic critical thinking skills that you have to really uh, instruct, especially the ninth graders on? I think the first thing is confidence. They are always, they think that there's only one answer and they're struggling because they want it to be the right answer, and they don't, they're scared to put themselves out there. So that's the first step, is build their confidence, because literature especially is so interpretive that yes, there are questions like you can't, the main character is the main character, the name is the name, but what you get out of it often is transmutable in, in between individuals. I think the biggest thing for, as a critical thinker is teaching them once they have that confidence is when you have your answer, how can you prove it? Because that's important. If you say that, you know, a farewell to arms is as much of a romance as it is a piece of war literature, give me evidence to prove it. And as long as you can back it up, it's not wrong. And, and using those critical thinking skills of being open-minded. Absolutely. And considering the opposing point of view. And yes, and that. how to discuss that. Right. Because we live in a time period where when there's an opposing point of view, the first option is to attack, not listen let that resonate for a second, and then share your ideas as well. So teaching them how to communicate rather than argue, is a that's a skill in itself that I think would serve them. Well, and I guess that those skills go into play because you also teach leadership. Yes, absolutely. So talk about that a little bit. So with leadership, it's all about um, taking, one, ownership of yourself and who you are, and then also keeping yourself accountable. One of the big phrases we have is, because I said I would. So if you say you're gonna do something, don't do it because you feel obligated because of X, Y, and Z. Do it because you, as a person, said you would do it. And that's honorable. So honor is a big thing with leadership. And then also knowing that there are so many differences in humanity. We're such a diverse population that you have to be open-minded and you have to be willing to not always agree, but be willing to hear other sides. And sometimes one of the most beautiful things that can happen in a person's life is when they change their minds, because that means that they were open-minded. 
And so that goes into leadership as well. And so how do you see those students growing from day one of leadership until mm -hmm. you have to say goodbye to them? And, and that's the hardest part too, is saying goodbye. It's seeing them know, realize the impact they've made on other students and what they've learned. Not everyone has an opportunity to be in a leadership role at such a young age. And so when they do, and they, as much as they teach the freshmen, the juniors and seniors learn from the freshmen themselves. And many of them come up to me and go, wow, I just taught that lesson. Teaching's hard. <laughs> yes, it is, because there, there's so many that goes into that. And so their lessons that they take into college and life and the confidence they have as well, I think, is really is what's gonna help them in, to be college and career ready. So there's a big emphasis these days now on social emotional wellness. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you do to you know check in on your students, make sure they're okay? Absolutely. And what kind of what kind of strategies do you have in working with your students? Absolutely. I think one is it has to start in the at the very first day of school, and you have to stay consistent all the way to the last. And so putting your phone away is a big one. I know that our I basically have a laptop in my pocket. But the idea is the students don't know if I'm texting, they don't know if I'm emailing, I could be playing a video game. Knowing that I'm here for them, that's big. And then also, as they walk in the door, I stand there, usually with a cup of coffee in hand to get caffeinated, but <laughs> just checking in, how are you doing? How was your weekend? And students are, they'll, once they're open, they'll share. They'll tell you how it was, and they'll tell you, you know, it's been hard, uh, my mom's in the hospital, and then you know to give them what they need. And sometimes it's space, so you have to be able to read that, but sometimes it's, they just need someone to kind of push them through the door. Or give them, you know, you need a couple minutes, go outside. Be flexible. Understand we're all human. We're here to learn, but we're also all human. And so that's probably reflective of, of the um, professional learning that you go through because it's not just English mm -hmm. and leadership. It's also the social and emotional wellness. Yes. So you always have to kind of be you know, learning new things. Yes, about absolutely. How, and how valuable is that learning? It, it, it's, it's absolutely huge in the fact that it's, it's easy to just say like, oh, I know the kid kind of, he's bummed, he's a teenager. But there's so much that goes on in for social and emotional wellness that once you have that training, and it's not just one training either, it's you constantly have to learn more and more. Constant reinforcement. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Knowing how to connect with the students who really need that social and, and emotional check-in, that's big. So what inspired you to teach? Well, how did, why did you become a teacher? I think it was my teachers, quite honestly. I had amazing teachers. When I sit down in a room and someone says, oh, I really hated my fifth grade teacher or my ninth grade teacher, I was lucky. I had great ones. And they impacted not only my life, but my friends. And I wanted that too. I wanted to help other generations and impact them and get them to go into the world and be the change that we need. Is there one teacher that stands out for you? I would say there's two, actually. Uh, my junior teacher and my senior teacher, and they are uh, Mr. Young and Mr. Little at my high school, and they both had such a passion for not just literature, but also for their job. It, it looked, they made it look fun. They made it look like they never truly worked a day in their life because every day they weren't working. They were just loving what they do. And so I think that showed to me that that's possible. So what does it mean to you to be named a Teacher of the Year for your school district? It's such an honor. It truly is. We have, I mean, in every district, but in my district, we have such amazing, professional, and dedicated individuals that have given their lives to Galt High School. As, and we have parents of the community that are teachers. We have people that commute an hour and a half to work at our school, that they, they all deserve trophies and medals and pedestals because they are some of the most intelligent, caring individuals that I know. And so to, to know that they stand behind me on this is one of the highest compliments I could ever receive. So finally, what would you say to someone who's considering teaching as a profession? I would say try it. Um, don't be afraid to just jump in. Go find a friend that teaches and say, can I come to your room? Can I check it out? Can I teach a lesson with you? Um, don't be afraid to do your homework, right? Because subbing is hard, because as we know, teenagers are teenagers whether 500 years ago or now. Mm -hmm. So some, a lot of people get discouraged that way, but I think if you're looking into teaching and you want a job that is always changing, physically and emotionally and mentally demanding and challenging in a positive way, and knowing that you're fulfilled, it's a job definitely worth considering. Right, well, congratulations to you and, and thanks for spending some time with us. We appreciate it. We've been speaking Absolutely. with Jonathan Thank you. Jonas, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Galt Joint Union High School District. Thanks for right. joining us. Thank you so much.